Uh, and we are still miss, missing Jeff, is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. And do we know whether he's joining us tonight? I've, I've not heard that he's not. Julia, great to see you after all your travels throughout the universe. Uh, and welcome to the Wednesday, February 16th. 2022 online meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. As always, we start with general public comments. Are there anyone out there? Uh, Sandra, I'm assuming you want to speak to the uh, proposal, the late mm -hmm. the Laurel Park proposal. Is that yes, correct? yeah, or okay. just be there to respond to questions. Great. Yeah. So we'll wait. We will wait on that. Um, since there seems to be no one else. Out there, we have minutes to approve. Uh, Sarah sent us yesterday or today or sometime the October 27th uh, minutes. Is there a motion to approve those? Motion to approve. Thank you, Dan. A second? Second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Oh, Sarah, you got to take us through the list. Is that right? We do. Uh, Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Just realized we're down Linda as well, but we still have a quorum, correct? We do, just, okay. just barely. Just barely, okay. Um, Chair's report, I have a couple of things. One is that uh, Sarah has been in contact with Michelson Galleries, uh, in fact, had some uh, correspondence with them today. Sarah, do you wanna share what you shared with me about that? Sure, so uh, Paul, who represented the galleries during both applications had a, a lot of questions about the historic <laughs> preservation restriction and how that would work, um, how they'll be reimbursed. And I, I answered those and I'm waiting to hear back from them. So they have not signed the contract at this point. And, and uh, so everything is on hold and, we're, and that scaffolding in front of the building has nothing to do with restoration efforts. Is that correct? It's just a- I, I don't know. So they were planning to start work, I believe in March. Um, which would be fine from a CPA perspective as long as the contract is signed we, we, because it's a reimbursable grant anyway, but I, I don't know exactly what the purpose of the scaffolding is. Any questions for Sarah about the Michelson proposal? Um, just another thing I wanted to bring up. I don't know if folks saw the Gazette yesterday's paper, Tuesday's, um, the, the, uh, on A3 when in big, bold headings, community money for private homes question. And this is about the Amherst CPA. CPA panels recommended 2.9 million in spending requests now moves to finance committee. And I guess folks are raising concerns over two of the proposals. Um, one is 240,000 going toward a private condominium building for historic preservation. So I thought that was interesting. And folks may remember, it was quite a few years ago, a proposal came to us to fund a private condo, which was the site of the old jail in Northampton. Uh, and we ended up rejecting that. Um, Amherst is moving forward to support this, this building. So if you have a chance to look at that Gazette article, it's, it's, it's actually quite interesting. The other quote controversial one was 130,000 for painting and repair of the Amherst Women's Club. Uh, and um, that is owned by a nonprofit. So it seems like a different situation there. But nonetheless, I guess CPC money in, uh, in Amherst goes through the finance committee. And then I don't know on to, on to someone for their, for their approval. So if you'd like to look at that, uh, please do. And that's it for Chair's report. Uh, tonight is the community's chance to um, voice their opinions of our community preservation plan update. Um, 
and I'm seeing no one out there to do that. Is that right, Sarah? Is there? I, no, I, I do not see anyone. Okay. This comes as no surprise. I'm not sure we've ever had anyone comment on our plans, <laughs> have we? Um, I, not, not in my recollection. I don't think so. For the amount of work that Sarah puts into them, uh, that is the way that it is. And maybe that's a tribute to the good amount of work that you do, Sarah, in terms of it being clear and transparent and uh, accessible and uh, and everything that you want to know is in that whatever it is 70 80 pages something like that right uh, Sarah's going to um, uh, continue to do some of her work her editorial magic on it and we will not discuss it anymore now but now that there's no public comment on it uh, Sarah will be reworking a little bit tweaking a little bit back to our uh, review and our approval um, coming up. So there's still openings for folks if they have comments, suggestions, constructive criticisms to get that to Sarah. And we will revisit this um, in what, a few weeks, Sarah? Is that right? Something like that? Uh, yeah, probably the meetings with applicants wouldn't be a, a good one to do it, but maybe after that, um, the committee could officially approve the plan. Great. All right. Any questions for Sarah about the plan or any stuff on how to proceed on that? Okay. So um, unlike last uh, session, we only have four proposals in front of us, one of which we'll be dealing with tonight. The four pro proposals total uh, Two million and six thousand dollars. St. John's Church is eight hundred thirty thousand. Laurel Park, which we'll be looking at tonight, is three thousand. The Shepherd Barn, the fourth and final project of the Shepherd's Barn, um, is a two hundred fourteen thousand project. And then, of course, the big one is uh, is Prospect Place, the sixty or sixty one units. Is it? for a million dollars. Um, so we will be dealing with those beginning two weeks from now. But tonight our job is to discuss the Laurel Park uh, application and try to move that forward uh, in one evening because it comes in as a, as a small grant. And again, we have three choices here. One is to reject it, two is to accept it, uh, with modifications if need be. And the third is to bump it into the queue with the other three projects. Um, Sandra Matthews, is it, uh, is here from one of the organizations of Laurel Park. Laurel uh, Park Arts. Well, actually, I'm a member of both. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to begin by just telling us a little bit about the project and and we've all hopefully had a chance to review it, and it's pretty clear mm -hmm. and pretty concise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is your opportunity to fill us in on anything you would like to like to do. Okay, I, I can you hear me all right? We can. Okay, I I don't think I have anything to add to the proposal, but just in in summary, we're proposing to put up six historical signs um, in commemoration or taking the occasion of the 150th anniversary of the founding of Laurel Park to do this. Um, we've chosen a company to work with and we have the support of the homeowners at Laurel Park. And um, basically I think I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Do folks have questions uh, for uh, Laura? I'm sorry, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Laurel, no, Sandra. <laughs> uh, questions at everybody good, good to go? I, I have one question, uh, Sandra. Uh, when I was looking at the, when I, I'm sorry, I, yeah, no, I continue to want to call you Laurel. Uh, when I was looking at the project, I saw that there is, um, it's I'm looking for my notes here, uh, $919 in shipping that right. once the signs are mm -hmm. complete to, to with, uh, 
mm -hmm. um, the graphics uh, place to, to send them back. Uh -huh. Now, I know you're not asking us for the shipping cost. Right, you're right. And we're, yeah. we're, we're looking into I'm ways. Wondering why, why mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, a sixth of the project is shipping? Is there... Right. Well, we uh, um, that was a quote from the Fossil Graphics, the company who's making the signs. I guess they're quite heavy. And when we saw that number, we're, we're looking into other options of renting a truck and picking up the signs ourselves, which would cost less. But since this, as you said, is not the part of the uh, project that would be funded by um, the CPA uh, funds, then... Um, we that that is in process, but I, I agree it looks very high, and we're we're hoping to reduce it. And did you get any other quotes other than the one graphic arts place? Yes, um, three. Let's see. Uh, now my notes from before. Um, <clears throat> we also Amherst um, ha has done a series of signs um, commemorating writers, and I got a quote from the place that. They did theirs, which was higher than than fossil graphics, and also the signs are not as nice. So we decided not to go with them. And we also looked at metal signs and at um, uh, two different kinds of metal signs, which um, also did not compare favorably from from two different companies. Um, I I have all that information somewhere else if if you should need it. And Sarah, the city's done work with fossil graphics before. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. We have, they're sort of our standard go-to for these types of signs mm -hmm. and we've had a great experience. They hold up really well and they look nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, right. So it sounds like you've done your due diligence, Sandra, in, uh, in looking at other places. Yes. Uh, other questions for Sandra? Okay. Linda uh, had a question before. I don't know if she still does. Um, well, Brian uh, asked it, but I also just wanted to say mm -hmm. that I don't have much by way of question because I thought it was a very, for $3,000, you put a lot of work into the application <laughs> and I really appreciated that. And uh, mm, thank I thought you. it was quite, a, quite an, a nice job you did. So thanks. Thank you. And who knew there was a train spur that actually went to Laurel Park? Yes, Bay? yes. Oh my uh -huh, goodness, right. that's so yeah. cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Looks like Dan, we, Dan uh, has a question. Oh, good, thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Thanks, Brian. Uh, hi, Sandra, I'm just wondering, yeah, you know, I saw in the application that the public's welcome to, to be on the grounds and I've been there, it's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything in the Laurel Park uh, association or community documents that assures public access to those grounds or are the roads that would that go through the neighborhood or those public roads where the signs would be accessible to the public uh, mm -hmm. so so the signs will will actually five of them will they will be on or in front of buildings on the not on the street side actually so it's, they're really visible for walkers or wheelchairs um i don't know if there is a uh, formal documentation of Laurel Park being open to the public, but it, as far as I know, it always has been. Um, that's a good question. Um, where the signs are located is in the area where the public comes, because we do hold public events regularly. Um, we, we've been having online events lately, but um, generally in the warmer weather, we hold events in the Tabernacle and Normal Hall especially, and um, we, uh, we have a whole system for setting up parking for the public and we, we, we work hard at that. Um, so, uh, and when people come for those events, they would see the signs, but they're also welcome to come any other time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But, but that is a good question. Other questions? Just have a comment. Um, Sandra and her partners on this project, so that would be Liz and Lara, uh, came before the, the Historical Commission in January and um, made a fantastic presentation. Mm. And uh, the commission was fully in support of this and also 
really encouraging Laurel Park to think about um, becoming part of the National mm -hmm. Register because it is such a rare resource. Um, it's, mm -hmm. there, are, there are others, as you stated in the proposal across the country, communities like this, mm -hmm. but um, right. not a lot. And it's pretty, you know, mm -hmm. it's very significant. So mm -hmm. that was it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so the uh, is there a motion to fund the uh, Laurel Park to the tune of three thousand dollars? I so moved. Thank you, Martha. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, a couple of them. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on this? Sarah, you want to take us through a roll call? All right, uh, Linda. Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right. All right. Thank you for an excellent proposal, Sandra. We'll look forward to uh, going to Laurel Park to look at the signage by the yes. end of the summer. Is that right? Yes, we hope so. And, and anytime beforehand, we'd love to welcome you anytime. Great. So, so is it a done deal? Uh, not quite. We okay. are a recommending body. Uh, mm -hmm. And we move it forward now in an expedited way because you're a small grant mm -hmm. uh, to right. city council. Okay. And it's city council who appropriates the money and gives a final thumb thumbs up we would be uh, shocked if they did not do what mm -hmm. we recommended mm -hmm. in this case because right. i think you've done a wonderful job in in your proposal uh, but i'm sure anything can happen but you have to wait a little longer okay sarah, do you know sarah, when this when does the city council meet sarah uh so they are meeting they won't be able to take this up until mm -hmm. Uh, March 3rd. Okay. And the, they have a slightly different process now where their finance committee meets on a separate day. So I don't, I don't know when their second reading on this will be. Mm -hmm. uh, but March 3rd would be the time to go and um, make a public comment at the beginning of the meeting. If you like. uh, uh -huh. And Sandra, Sarah, um, um, Sarah will be your contact person to move the project forward okay all right well right. thank you all very much thank you you're welcome okay. to stick around for the rest of the meeting or you're welcome to zoom off i'll, I'll zoom off but appreciate your support okay. thank you for bye thanks sandra bye bye thank you all right moving right along funding round schedule and site visits sir uh so i can of the schedule. So I, unlike past rounds where we've had to tweak things a little bit due to the significant number of applications, I think we are all set with the schedule that we uh, agreed on previously. So that will mean, let's see. Uh, so meetings with applicants on March 2nd, uh, public comment session March 16th, and then concluding discussion and making funding recommendations April 6th or April 20th, and site visits either virtual or in person anytime in there, depending on what the CPC thinks is necessary. Did you send that, that schedule out to us by email? I did a long time ago, but I, I will send that again. Could you do that again? That would be great. Um, so in terms of site visits, uh, do we want to schedule those? Do we want to ask them to do a little virtual thing? How, how do people feel about that? I mean, we could go to St. John's. We go to the, are we allowed into the nursing? Oh, the old nursing home, the prospect place? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where Valley CDC is in their acquisition process oh, right. or if they their not option yeah. would allow for that, but I could certainly inquire. I was certainly surprised to see in the photos that they sent. I don't know if people have it, 
had a chance to look at the proposal, but there's like the hospital beds are there with IV lines hanging down and um, television sets. And it's sort of, uh, it's interesting that it was left the way, the way that it, it, it was left. Uh, and I guess the question also is with St. John's, right? Do they, could, but, but they own the building, the development company owns that. They so, do. Um, I'm, I'm sure they would be amenable to a site visit if that's something the community members wanted. Uh, the third, of course, is Shepherd Barn, which a number of us have gone on a number of occasions in that this is the fourth and final request. Uh, but I'm sure um, the two co-directors would be happy to show folks around there if, if folks okay. have not been or want yet another look to see to see what's going on. Uh, do people want in-person site visits in any of these three places? How do people feel? Don't all speak at once. Linda? Um, I think I've seen the Shepherd, Shepherd Barn uh, enough. Um, I would be interested in St. John's, however, just to have them talk in front of the building about what it is that they are proposing to do, because I found it somewhat difficult to tell from the application. So I know I can go and look at it myself, but I, I, I would appreciate a, a tour from them of, of what they are proposing to do. How do other people feel about the St. John's? Uh, St. John's is just probably just outside. That's all they're looking at, all we're looking at, right? So we wouldn't have to go inside on that. Would other people be interested in that? St. I, I agree with Linda. I would appreciate, yeah, a presentation. I mean, they could do it virtually if they wanted. It would be easier for people. Um, yeah. And we could, they could just film it or you know, stand outside and film it and talk to us. Um, I don't think we probably all need to go down there. <clears throat> yeah, that support, makes sense to me, Martha. Yeah, I would support a virtual too. I, I, I think that last time when we had that, I mean, I'm not sure they can get a drone, but still that nice drone view, it really gives you a better up close and personal to see the, what, what needs a repair. Uh, I, I like the idea of going, but sometimes standing outside, um, in some points and says, see up there. I don't always see up there. How do people feel with about a virtual tour asking them to do that? Is that supportive? People are supportive of that, yes? Okay. Sarah, can you ask the applicant to, to do that? No, absolutely. Great. How about um, Prospect Place? Or the, the, again, the question is, they don't even own it yet. So that may not be a, and we could just drive around it. Um, I don't feel as strongly about um, having that presented to us um, because yeah, it's been vacant for, well, I guess kind of vacant for so long and um, it's going to get completely changed on the inside. So it feels like, yeah, we could just drive around past it if you haven't ever done that before. It's such a prominent building in Northampton. Other people feel the same way, not, a, not needed to do that? Okay. And it looks like, I think a lot of us have been to um, Shepherd Barn, perhaps some of the newer folks haven't, but um, getting in touch with Lori and the, uh, what is the other co-director's name? Uh, Betty Sharp. Betty, uh, they would be happy to, to give you tours of that if people don't, don't feel the need to do that. Um, so is that, are we good to go on that? On the, and Sarah, you'll send us out the, the schedule for the next few weeks. When, yes. are, when are questions due to you for applicants? So questions are due. Excuse me. Um, I think we'd said Friday. Uh, if people want the weekend, you could get those to me on Monday. Friday is in this Friday. Yeah, uh, but but Monday's fine. It's not. How about Monday? 
not a yeah. hard deadline. So questions Monday, and can you email folks that as well as a reminder, particularly since we're missing a few, a few. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Sarah about the funding round schedule or site visits? All right, so sent a, Sarah, Sarah sent out the um, draft has not been approved by uh, the housing disabled homeless project folks, but if folks had a chance to look at it, um, there were just a number of things that I think Sarah wanted to talk about. Uh, the, the, the big one, and again, they have not approved this contract yet, but we want to approve it before it goes to them to approve. Uh, if you have it in front of you, I think it's paragraph one, two, three, four, where it says the city shall pay the grantee upon the recording of a first mortgage to the city. So that's a that's a big deal. Um, that language is a big deal. Uh, Sarah, you want to guide us through what that means and why it's important as a reminder? Sure. Uh, so unlike most of the affordable housing projects that the CPC looks at, this is not going to involve an affordable housing restriction. But we absolutely wanted to make sure that the city's investment was protected. So the various clauses throughout the contract provide mechanisms for the city to recoup the CPA investment if, um, you know, if, if, you, if the business fails or if the, uh, the building is vacant or if it's used for another purpose. And that, that first mortgage means it will be senior to all other financing. Um, we also specified that invoices shall be submitted using AIA application and certificate for payments, uh, which is a little bit above and beyond what we typically do since this is a larger project. Um, they are obligated to carry appropriate fire and building insurance. Um, An insurance company needs to notify the city if anything changes with that. As the CPC required, a housing development consultant is necessary on the project, uh, details about the mortgage, and then requiring statements each year, um, confirming that the facility is used for affordable housing in accordance with the application. And they, they have not had a chance to look at this contract yet, is that correct? Uh, we did send it to them for review. I don't know if they've looked at it yet. So it's a concurrent review in this case. Uh, questions for Sarah about this contract? Uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, um, thanks, Sarah. I, I'm sorry, I was fumbling to pull it up when you were doing the the, um, the overview, but did I hear you saying something about this? Uh, Northampton was going to be the, um, the note holder of sort of first tier note holder? Yes, so they had initially planned to go with a mortgage through Greenfield Savings Bank, but went with private financing instead. So it's, it's sort of moot anyway, but the city will be senior to- uh, that, that was my question. If, the, yeah, if they, guess, chose, to, if they yeah. chose to go a different route. Yeah, that was, that, I guess that was my follow-on question, which was that um, if, 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 if that was stipulated, did we foresee that? Because I'm not familiar with how these things work. Did we foresee that that would have a chilling effect on other potential um, finance entities, but if they're going to go private, it really doesn't matter. So never mind. Yeah, they so they've actually already acquired the building. Um, so they're oh. just working to put together financing Alrighty. for operations at this point. Operations and then the, the CPA should cover the, the bulk of the building renovations. Great. Thank you. Uh, Linda? Uh, it sounds like things have changed considerably. When they came before us, it was a joint venture. And this is just one of the joint venture partners. So I was wondering, is the joint venture still involved? Who actually owns the building? Yeah, so Linda, that's a good question. And that's something that might actually change with the final draft of the contract. Um, because we didn't actually know when we drafted this who would be owning the building. So it. Uh, we just have independent housing solutions listed, but if another entity owns the building, they'll have to sign the contract as well. And then I just had a, a drafting correction, I think correction 
um, under use of property for intended purpose, which is on page three, bottom of page three. Um, it, uh, so the third line down has a sentence that starts enforcement of this clause shall be at the discretion of, and it says grantee, but it should be the city. And yeah. then, uh, the following sentence, any election by the, again, it should be the city. Yes. Thank you. Those are okay. Okay, got it. Okay. That was it. Linda, you're so good at finding those little words that make a huge amount of difference. So thank you for your eyes on, on that. Uh, other folks? Dan? I, I did just pull up the, the property record and the owner of the, the property is a different name than what we have on the contract. So most likely needs to, to get an, an amendment there. And who is the owner, Dan? It looks like on the, the deed, let's see, there's Viability Inc. and, Re and Reliance Holdings Corp. But, well, let's see, Grant Tours Vi Viability Inc. Grant T. Reliance Holding Corp. So viability is the the organization. I guess they, the, the maybe that was the maybe that was the previous owner, and then sold to Reliance Holding Corp. Is what the what the record looks like. Does that make sense to you, Sarah? Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll add the Reliance Holding as the owner as a contract signatory as well. Um, they both have to be listed because Independent Housing Solutions was the one who put forward the application and right. will most likely be the one um, moving forward with the work. Um, Martha, any questions for Sarah? Julia? No? Any other discussion on this contract? Sarah, what do you need from us on this? Do you need a vote to move it forward? Yeah, a uh, vote to approve would be great. Okay, so is there a motion to approve this contract for housing the disabled homeless project? I'll move to approve. Thank you, Dan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Sarah, do, do we know whether they've gotten a consultant yet? I don't know, no. They were aware of that clause um, early on, so I hope they've been working on it, but I, I haven't heard that they have selected someone. Any other comments? Okay, Sarah, you wanna take us through? All right, Linda? Yes. Martha? Yes. Julia? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Brian? Yes. All right, thank you. So we do have other business not foreseen when the agenda was published, and that is uh, Wayne's request to move funds around uh, within the Mineral Hills Greenway. Um, Sarah, you wanna explain what this page is and what we need to do? Sure. Uh, so the city had approved an, an application a few years ago for acquisition of the, the Galena parcel with the mines on it and a few others in the Mineral Hills. The soft costs were a little bit lower on that project than expected. So there is some funds remaining. Um, so Wayne is hoping to be able to use some of those funds to uh, take out this um, really substantial culvert and bridge structure in another section of the Mineral Hills that's a remnant of the gravel pit operation that was there and, and really just has no place being in a conservation area. Sir, what does the word Gabion mean? 
uh, those are otherwise known as rocks in cages. <laughs> if you've seen them, um, they're used for stabilization or the, some places, some cities even turn them into benches. So it's basically a, a chain link fence type structure full of rocks. That 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 helps to stabilize the bank. Is that what it, it, is? it does? Yeah, it's used in place of um, uh, larger concrete blocks or those driven uh, steel piled walls that you see on the two ninety one and three ninety one. So Sarah felt that there was this was a significant enough reallocation that it needed to come to our attention and to our vote. Uh, any questions for Sarah, Linda? Uh, Sarah, there was some mention in there about how removal of the culvert and the gabion, whatever it is, would uh, really enhance wildlife. And I just need some help understanding how that works, what, what that would actually do. Sure. So this is basically a, like a highway type structure in the middle of a conservation area that was intended for incredibly heavy equipment to drive over. Um, so it, it's not an op it's not an open crossing. So typically we would on a bridge, we would want a box culvert where this is the bottom and it's open and then you drive on the road up here. This is just a small pipe. So turtles and, and any sorts, sorts of wildlife can't make it through there. Um, it's really inappropriate. It doesn't make sense to have it in a conservation area. Um, so it, it should be a big benefit if it is removed. I, I still don't quite get it how it helps them if it's removed. They're not using, I, I, maybe I'm just not visualizing it correctly. Uh, so the, the wetlands will be able to be restored um, in the area where the, the road is now and it will be open and free for wildlife passage. It's really inaccessible. Now, now I understand. Okay, which, thank which you. Do exist there. <laughs> that, that was helpful because my one question was, it would have been useful to see some photos you know, that, that was what I felt was missing from this. Yeah, this, oh, sorry for the, the late sending on this, but this is something that had just come up for Wayne. So this was a little bit of a late addition. Uh, Martha? So my understanding is correctly is um, the total funding, the total package here, which includes allowable funds and then this, addition that Wayne wants to transfer over and then funds that are in the planning and sustainability engineering and conservation account. That's for engineering services, correct? Because the way it's worded. It is, yeah. Okay, so we're, so they're not gonna actually, these funds aren't gonna be used to actually go out and remove the gabions and um, the culvert. It's not, no. Um, okay. Wayne is really confident that if we have shovel ready designs, we'll. Yeah, so the engineering will allow you to go out and get more money, presumably, which is great. We just lost her. <laughs> I mean, it seems like kind of a, um, um, an, an, kind of an invasive, intrusive project. So I would imagine the engineering would have to be done carefully on this, not to disrupt a lot of the environment. Removing a culvert and a, um, a gabion like this can be a big job and a messy one. So that's all. Yeah, and it, the, the way it's structured, it's a little bit um, easier project than taking out um, a, a different type of culvert. So it, it won't be as bad as another project, but Wayne is confident that if, if we do have shovel ready designs that we'll be able to find some funding for the implementation. Uh, Chris, any questions? I'm sure I do, but I, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't gotten them organized yet. Um, I, I guess Martha was headed in the direction I'm doing. So there's $20,000, allocated for the proposed for the project of which roughly seven to eight is money that we have supplied in the past. Is that, is that what we're going with? Uh, yeah. So the, the other funding that Wayne has listed there was um, improvements and invasives removal and other types right. of activities at the Mineral Hills Greenway with which this seemed consistent. Okay. Um, do we have any thoughts on 
was because Martha was asking sort of the question that I was getting at. This this is engineering. This isn't this isn't work. Um, do we have any idea where what the source of funding for the actual project itself would where, where that would generally come from? Would that be another ask for us, or is that something that um, y'all have general resources available for? Yeah, so this is not intended to be another CPA request. There are a couple state grants that should be a really good fit for the work okay. once the designs are complete. And then I guess my obvious question is a rhetorical one, which is um, how often do we end up with $7,000 of unallocated funds lying around? Um, but <laughs> I guess the answer to that is not very often, and this is just a bonus, so. It, it does happen sometimes. It's not uncommon for applicants to return excess funding at the end of a project if they don't have another use for it. Cool, thank you. Uh, Dan, any questions? I'm good, I, I appreciate the my questions asked by, by others. Any other questions for Sarah about this? Okay, is there a motion to approve the reallocation of funds for the uh, Mineral Hills Habitat Restoration? Uh, so moved. Thank you, Martha. Second? Second. Okay, thank you, Julia. Sarah? All right, uh, Linda? Yes. Martha? Uh, yes. Julia? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Right. So Jeff, I, I know you just joined us, but if you want if you want to vote, you're welcome to do that. I'll, abs I'll abstain having just joined. Okay. You, you've joined us in time to adjourn us. So you <laughs> I can support that motion. <laughs> we went from, I think, one of the longest meetings we had last time, right? I think it went at least two and a half hours to this is one of the shortest meetings that we have had. Um, Jeff, we did uh, had no one comment on the plan. Uh, we voted to fund a small grant application for Laurel Park. Mm -hmm. We've moved the, the uh, housing for the disabled contract forward um, and reallocated money for Mineral Hills. Uh, the thing you need to know is uh, questions for applicants will be due to Sarah on Monday, the 21st, and then we will be uh, entertaining the applicants in our meeting on Wednesday, the 2nd. So, but Sarah's going to send that schedule out to us and a reminder to, to, to get questions in. Very good. I apologize. And just, uh, I'm doing stop and shop bargaining right now for all of New England. Yeah. Oh. And um, we had a long session. So, no, good luck with that. Didn't plan on that, but it happened. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I have one question. So, the, if we do the virtual with St. John Cantius, when will that be? Uh, so I was planning just to have them make a video, if, if that works. Okay, and then and we then just we view just... it in our leisure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It would be, is it is it pushing it to ask them to do that before the 2nd of uh, March? I can certainly do that. I don't know what their capabilities are, but they at the very least they could it's not you know, point, to point to some pictures or something. Yeah. Um, it, it's a big request for CPA funding, so I'm sure they will be amenable to yeah. any time. Yeah. All right, without further ado, is there a motion to adjourn? Did we do that already? No. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Well, thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. And we will see everybody in two weeks where it will be March, if we can believe it. Mm. So have a wonderful two weeks, folks. Thank you, Sarah.